<laughs> I know. I forgot our. I forgot that that's our new uh, welcome to people. We what, call them well, welkers. Welcome, welcome, welkers, or something like that. Welcome, yeah, welkers. Good. Happy Saturday, everybody. My name is Joe. That's Nick. That's George. And uh, with us joining us, we have Jason Waggispack, who's an actual like we have academia on the show today. <laughs> like he wrote he wrote the book on Saturday morning cartoons, and uh, we're gonna get into that. But um, yes, what cereal are you guys eating? I've, I'm I'm Bob eating. Bob Hedges sent uh, sent me this one. It's a Crayola limited edition cereal. Oh, Nick, he sent. Oh, to me too. <laughs> oh, now I don't feel special at all. No, oh. he knew that we would fight if he if you just received it. Yeah, he's one of our viewers who sends us uh, gifts and uh, limited edition. I'm so glad we got these. What not do you think about sweet, it? Not as sweet as I thought. They're more like See, kicks. Really, I thought it was way too sweet. No, but... it's like kicks to me. I was expecting tricks, but it's more like kicks. Um, I, I I sense a little tricks in there too. Mm -hmm. A little bit. I noticed that the the uh, highlight here is Jazzberry. Mm -hmm. It features Jazzberry, whatever you know, that is. I feel like they really missed an opportunity to include crayons with this, like crayons in the bottom, so that you could like draw while you're. I you mean, know, that's why that's why the cover is like this, right? So that you can color on. You got to use your own crayons. That's I went digging; shit. they weren't in there. Yeah. Um, they Jason, raspberries, but not crayons. Jason, are you e also eating Crayola cereal? Oh, not today. Today, I decided to go with a uh, childhood favorite, Raisin Bran. Oh, Health on. Nut. <laughs> health Nut family size. I like it. All right. Yeah, I would have um, gone with Brock 19 if uh, Kellogg's hadn't decided to discontinue it a few years ago. So it's like, might one? as well go with the raisins. Which kind? <laughs> what kind of 19? A Proc 19. It's a, oh, right. kind of just a brand cereal. It was actually pretty good. And then Kellogg's decided, nah, we don't want this anymore. So do you, you douse it in sugar at least? <laughs> George, what about you? What are you eating? Well, in the past, I've, I've had cereals that were uh, based on the character cereals. Um, I've even had those like uh, Shaddy Flakes based on Saturday morning cartoons. Joe, I had um, uh, Cheery Joe's. And oh, this yeah? week, I have uh, Nick's. Um, oh. oh, how and, about uh, that? Uh, Joe bullied Marty approved, and actually, there's a uh, a thing in the you can see that with three Nick's UPC symbols, you can actually get Marty. Oh, oh yeah, really? he just comes in the mail. Yeah, so just, well, oh, he's, cool. he's got a he's got a lot of health problems, so buyer beware. Um, um, I will eat any cereal that is Joe bullied. Those are my favorite yeah. <laughs> kinds. Um, all right, so Jason. You you took your love of Saturday morning cartoons a step further, like than than the rest of us. We just enjoyed them. You wrote a book about it, um, Rise and Fall of the '80s Toon Empire, and it says you're a doctor here, or a PhD. Yeah, you, PhD. Like, PhD, like you're a doctor of like cartoonology, or like what? <laughs> like what is it? I think I probably ended up becoming a doctor of a cartoonology, but actually, uh, it's in political science. What what's your history with cartoons? Well, uh, I am a child of the 80s. I grew, I was born in 1981, so I came of age at the time that He-Man was around, She-Ra, Thundercats, and going on towards Ninja Turtles and things like that. So I watched a ton of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, so this, it was always kind of lingering in my mind. If, so if you're probably wondering, how did I come up with the idea for this uh, book? <laughs> for sure. Yeah. How? Yeah. Well, I was, um, it was like one day at, um, at my university. I was sitting back kind of thinking. You know, it's just kind of weird that there aren't any cartoons on afternoon television anymore. Because uh, it used to be you could just switch on, say, channel 47 or 62, or, and, you know, you get Ninja Turtles or DuckTales or something really cool like that. But now totally. it's just pretty much, you know, judge shows or things like that or sitcoms, you know, two I, and I a looked, half minutes. I looked it up today. I looked up what Saturday mornings look like, like this Saturday. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's all Little House on the Prairie reruns. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so at first I thought, well, maybe I'll just write like a little blog post or something to kind of explain it. And then I decided to kind of go on the, I went on the internet and I was like looking around and thought, wow, there is a lot of um, information regarding this era. And it's kind of built up more and more. And then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and write a book about this. And took about, I can't remember how many years, uh, but uh, about two, around 2017, I had it done and there we go. Nice. It's great too. There's so you like, you paint like a, a great picture of of the world back then too like the deke mm-hmm. and the animation or the filmation world and just uh mm-hmm. um but All we'll get into that we've more. been watching and talking about for <laughs> six months here it's 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 amazing yeah so, somebody right now is probably writing a, an academic book about uh, little house in the prairie reruns and that's just sad well that's gonna be our next uh that's gonna be our next show after this it's oh be yeah called, uh, yeah, yeah. Shaddy House on the Prairie is what it's going to be <laughs> called. Um, all right, let's get kick things off with a commercial. Um, we start every show with a commercial. Believe it or not, there was a toy line connected with today's cartoon. Uh, Chuck Norris had a whole line of uh, toys, and I'm going to play that commercial for you because it's pretty awesome. Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Bring it up, bang it down, fight wash the evil forever and Location Hong Kong Harbor. Assignment, locate smuggled warheads. Oh no, ninja warriors! Read nine through three, perfect strikes. Up next, super ninja. It was my karate against his. And there's up for us, chemo and the karate vet. A flip, a chop, a shot. This ball game was karate vet. Oh, Kenner's Chuck Norris Karate Commandos brought up sold separately. Have you have you guys uh are you guys familiar with this at all, with like Chuck Norris's world of, of uh, like toys and the cartoons? Did you guys watch this one at all? I, uh, I, didn't... I didn't watch the cartoon, but I have seen on eBay some of those figures and play sets. Um, and yeah. they're pr- pretty cool for a cartoon that didn't last long. They had a great toy line. Yeah. Jason, have you seen this one before? Have you seen uh, Karate Commandos? Uh, not until recently. I think it was something that was just always kind of out there on the periphery, but I never kind of decided to take a look at it. Yeah. Well, the reason I decided to play is because in the book, you have a part about morality lessons that are mm-hmm. always shoehorned in at the end of episodes. And it's always one of my favorite parts of these cartoons. Like, I would say, like, what do you think? Like 80 percent of them have some sort of morality lesson at the end. Right. Right. Filmation was big on that. Uh, Deke had a lot of that. And also some of the Hasbro inspired uh, cartoons had that. Uh, Gem had that. G.I. Joe. Pro Stars. We just watched Pro Stars recently. That had it. And mm-hmm. uh, but, but why do they why did they have the morality lessons at the end? Was it like a cash incentive or was there like pressure from parent groups to like this needs to be more educational or do you know why? I think that uh, cartoons of the era always kind of had that shadow hanging over them that these things were either too violent or too, you know, exploitative, exploitative of their young audience. So they kind of had to make sure that they had some redeeming value or what they call uh, pro social messages. Uh, I think for some of the people, they were pretty genuine in their desire, but sometimes it was really was just, you know, get these other people off our backs. I mean, because essentially these are commercials. Like these cartoons are commercials. And so they're like, oh, no, they're not just commercials. We, we, uh, we have a, a great message to give to the children here. So or with G.I. Joe, it's a half hour of shooting each other with lasers. And then, it's, <laughs> and then it's a little lesson at the end about sportsmanship or whatever it was. Well, also like this Chuck Doris, I watched a few episodes and he's talking about like it's always best to avoid violence. I was like, no, <laughs> if, if you avoided violence, you would not be Chuck Norris. You, you, you're pro violence. Yes, exactly. Um, all right, let's dive into this. This is a, a Ruby Spears cartoon uh, created by Chuck Norris. He has the credit for it. He doesn't have a hand in this. There's no way he does do the voice. But at this point in his career, he was an action star. He was he was in like war movies like Delta Force, Missing in Action. He started off in Bruce Lee movies. And I, I was wondering, like, how did he get to be popular with kids at this point? Because all of his movies were rated R. It's probably the same way that Rambo became popular rambo got its own cartoon um yeah or even like mr t i mean i guess yeah you you could watch the a team but that was more of an adult show too so yeah i don't know how those permeated culture enough that they became kid icons i have one theory in that they made a video game called like chuck norris karate or something like that and that's usually kids i mean that that, that can be a gateway into into uh, cartoons is, is the video game so by the way we have this on vhs as like a two-hour movie um, but I think it's like five episodes strung together, and I have all the five episodes I, on this DVD as well. So yeah. that's where uh, I think a lot of them got compiled. Um, yeah, and there's only five. It's one season, um, five episodes. No idea why it got pulled. I mean, it's it's not very remarkable 
you know, I mean, but they didn't care back then. It didn't have to be remarkable back then. It just had to have some action. It does have a lot of action. Um, it, uh, let's see, it's about Chuck Norris, his team of warriors. I mean, you've heard the story a million times. Um, <laughs> he's going, he's going up against the criminal organization vulture, purely evil, just straight up bad guys. Um, they is laugh. Vulture an, is vulture an acronym? By it's the all, way, it's capitalized. Okay. It's all capitalized. So I'm thinking yes, but they don't have the periods in between the V, the U, the okay, L. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because the Rambo's, you know, they everything was an acronym in that cartoon. Yeah, and I yeah. thought we would start with the first episode, but I watched it the other day, and it was really boring. Is it and the so, dolphin one? Yeah, deadly yeah, dolphin. Pretty boring. So, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty boring. So I was like, I'm gonna. I switched up at the last second, and I just I picked the one Nick we featured in a found footage show. Where he go, he's on the motorcycle and he steals the motorcycle and he goes, "Don't worry, I'm Chuck Norris." <laughs> yes. I just grabbed that episode. I haven't even watched it yet, so this will be oh, okay. new to all of us. So it's called Terror Train. Um, and the theme, the opening theme, is so good. It they they say Chuck Norris so many times in the opening sequence. So I want to make like a drinking game, but with cereal. Sure. Um, every I mean, time if, they kid, say, if kids didn't know who Chuck Norris would, was, they would by the end of this intro because they keep saying his name, right? George, will, George, will you keep a count? Will you like? Do you have a pen you can keep a count of how many times yes. they say Chuck Norris? Okay. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Here's uh, Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos with Terror Train. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris, man of action. Two in a row. Chuck Norris stars in Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Chuck Norris, he's got nerves of steel and strength to match. Give a chance to fall here. Chuck Norris with his team, Pepper. It's too dangerous, Chuck. Wow. Too much. Too much. Kimo, the samurai warrior. Reed, Chuck's teenage apprentice. Tabe, a sumo champion. Is it okay for heroes to have it's teenage Chuck apprentices Norris. anymore? Is that Dang kind him. of like, is it okay for uh, heroes to have teenage apprentices anymore? I feel like that's kind of. It's a little weird. With a, with a parental chaperone, I think you have to. Okay, got it. That's how it is. All right. With Chuck Norris, they battle the sinister forces of the Claw. Remember this. And the ruthless Super Ninja. I'll finish Norris! Chuck Norris stars in Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Super Ninja's hair is outside of his mask. I hope we see him again. Yes. Oh, so we there, will. We there definitely were, will. There were nine Chuck Norrises, <laughs> one Chuck, and one Norris. Wow. So, so, eleven. Um, well, it depends. It, if is is Chuck equal I would to say, Chuck Norris? I would say any mention of his name. Okay. Well, then we're That's at eleven. Okay. All right. Sweet. Now I have a stomachache. Now. <laughs> All right. Here we go. You know, there are people in the world who believe that violence is the answer to every problem. I'm one They're of those. Right. The first ones to clench <laughs> a fist or throw a punch. They think they always have to fight. And they do. The gang and I ran into the claw and some of his more nasty friends while we were transporting a uh, state-of-the-art robot and what turned out to be. <laughs> Where was I? How about a second take? Waiting for the teleprompter to catch up. <laughs> they don't get two takes when they got five episodes. He's so clearly reading the teleprompter, too. Why is there a ship in the background? Uh, Back right. There's a boat. Oh, a there is. It's like a model a ship. Sh yes. I wonder if that's his actual studio that he works out in where, where, where he punches Christ, ships yeah. yeah and where he and christine brinkley advertised their home gym oh yeah were they an item no but uh, they were at an infomercial item they were okay. co-hosts of an infomercial okay here we go we're back first ones to clench a fist or throw a punch they think they always have to fight the gang and i ran into the claw and some of his more nasty friends while we were transporting a uh, state-of-the-art robot and what turned out to be a very conversation train <laughs> turned out to be a terror train <laughs> and then right here terror train great uh did you guys give the chuck norris at all did we like did you guys like, like appreciate his movies at all did you ever go through a phase as an Absolutely. adult or... i've never seen a chuck norris movie no no only yeah i never i never went in, got into any of his movies either i mean he for me he was just the guy that was always you know out there but Nah, can't say. Yeah, he didn't do it for me either. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, The Rock, like they're cool action stars. This mm -hmm. guy looks like he'd be like sitting at a bar in Stoughton, Wisconsin. Yeah. Like, I mean, like he doesn't, yeah. he kind of has like kind of a wimpy voice too. 
Uh, I don't know. He's like the the kid from high school's dad who's who got arrested. <laughs> like there's, yes. he doesn't seem remarkable. Or maybe he got like eight DWIs or something. Yeah. Right. You know, okay. you know how there are the, the, those memes that are all like Chuck Norris doesn't. You know, I can't even think of one offhand, but they're. Oh how, yeah. How yeah. He is. The we, Chuck Norris facts. Yeah, yeah the facts. cure they, cancer with his tears or something like that. I, yeah, yeah, I would like in the comments for people to do ones that are only about car- Saturday morning cartoons. Oh, okay. About like Vulture. Vulture. Yeah, I like it. Sure, Vulture can be included, George. Okay. Great. Yeah. And George, by the end of the episode, can you tell us what Vulture stands for? <laughs> sure. Okay. Make it up. If, yeah, okay. No, no. No, I'll find the actual. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Sounds like they're in the Ari. We're heading for the ship, Mr. Director. We can see the laser robot from here. Chuck, could you please put on a shirt? <laughs> That's fine. There's a child present. <laughs> oh, look at the scraping. Chuck, make sure the claw doesn't get a hold of it. It would be a devastating blow to the free world. You can count on us, Mr. Director. Two shirtless men in that helicopter. Team, I want you to meet Mr. Yoshi, the inventor of the laser robot. Ah, Nuri-san, are you and your team ready to battle my creation? Whoa, it's a scary looking thing. What does it do? Everything. This robot is going to become the backbone of our ground defenses. Watch. Classic laser sound. (laughs) Not bad. That's quite a little toy you have there, Mr. Yoshi. That was a Disney cruise, Mr. Norris. (laughs) <laughs> Tanaka, we are in place. Are those guys good guys or bad guys? Can you just tell? I don't know. Gotta let it play out. The claw will be pleased when I hand him a laser robot. Start the attack! I'd buy his action figure. Full sunglasses. I like Uh-oh. the punk rocker guy. We have unexpected guest boss! Oh, okay. can I pause Let's it, Joe? Uh huh. Do you notice that his uh his whatever those are symbols or what is it a gong? That the yeah, it's it a says, weapon I'm not familiar with. It says Chuck Norris. It has his initials on it. <sighs> oh, it's such a toy. Th- that's got to be such a toy accessory. Yeah, right? it says CN on his uh, diaper there too. <laughs> <laughs> From a certain angle, it almost looked like a T to me. I, I thought it was T too, but no, I see the C now. Yeah. CN. Yeah. He's very CN. vain. Everyone on Norris's team has to have his, have his initials on it. As close to their groin as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Boss. Okay, let's get up. Nothing to worry about, gentlemen. Chuck and I was. A- I can't tell if they're culturally diverse or they're having like. Yeah, they're cult- pretty culturally diverse here, right? I mean, like. Yeah, there's a guy with a cape. I mean, <laughs> there's yeah, a magician. The turban. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Right. A lot of you... diverse facial hair, for sure. No, oh, definitely. <laughs> Remember, kids, fighting isn't the answer. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna let a child fight with this man. <laughs> what weapon is that? It's like a pagoda? These, these weapons are just it's, baffling. It's a pagoda on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a real weapon. Maybe his name is Pagoda. Look, we're out of swords, but we do have <laughs> Pagoda on the stick. Hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> I owe you one. That takes also nobody ever dies too. It's just like in GI Joe and all these. Just like, like life. I think, I think yeah, just like life. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they will get zapped by lasers, but you'll never see any blood or anything. They're just stunned. I think they use a lot of trap doors too. Of this mess. Let him go. Stop, or the boy will be hurt. If you hurt that boy, I'll rearrange every bone in your body. 
you are not and a going newer, to touch cooler me. skeleton. From what I read in the descriptions, there's a lot of the, the kid's name is Too Much. Yeah. There's a lot of too much getting stolen and taken away. <laughs> and then he has to go find too much. I would say like most of the stories are about too much getting stolen. Now I've always thought of him as like a uh, poor man's short round, which was uh, from Indiana Jones and the temple. of Doom. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Get the dignitaries and the robot to the bullet train. I'm going after too much. <laughs> Get the dignitaries and the robot to the bullet train. I'm going after too much. One more, one more time. <laughs> Get the dignitaries and the robot to the bullet train. I'm going after too much. I'm gonna tag that at the end of this episode. Also, I don't think he's a very good actor. Like, I'm, I'm not just like even as a Norris. cartoon. Just yeah. even as a cartoon, just his line reads and just like that flub that he had at the beginning. Uh, He's just, you know, he's no Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's, he's not... a great martial artist. There you go. We'll put yes. a positive spin on it. There you go. The claw's not going to like this. Oh, here comes the scene deck. I think this is the scene. That's my bike. Sorry, guys. This is an emergency. I'm Chuck Norris. Contact me through the American Embassy. <laughs> this is an emergency. I'm Chuck Norris. <laughs> the two like... things have nothing. It's like Homer Simpson saying, you'll have to speak up. I'm wearing a towel. It has nothing to do with the other. Yeah. Who cares if you're and Chuck And also, there, there must be like, oh, is that the guy from Missing in Action? Like, is that what the... <laughs> right. Oh, he's Contact from Contact the American Embassy. Yeah. It, like, they have nothing else to do. They have a huge... We're fishing here, guy. <laughs> There's no such thing as cell phones. <laughs> also, look how huge his hand is. Here. Sorry, guys. This is an. It's like that's an enormous hand. Whoa! I'm wow. Chuck Norris, contact me through the American Embassy. Americans. <laughs> Got that right. <laughs> Shut up, kid. Got to get on that plane. How's those throttles still going? Jeff! No! Now you're gonna get it, wise guy! We'll see. <laughs> no! This ought to finish him. <laughs> So much for your friend. Oh, you don't pay for that! Not affected by the wind, apparently. Chuck, you're safe! If Norris wants to plane that bad, he can. Can you pause it for a second? Gladly. I think the reason most of the bad guys have masks covering their their mouths or their entire heads is because it's easier to animate. You don't have to. 100%. You just make a little movement. You don't have to move a mouth or make it match anybody's dialogue. Exactly. That's totally yeah. it. Yeah. Jason, does that seem uh, accurate? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because all they want to do is just like make their like eyes blink every so often. Mm -hmm. Like at yeah. the very least, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Jason, what do you think so far? How you? How you? Have you seen this episode? Did you watch? I've never seen this particular episode. I did watch the uh, the first one, but uh, I didn't. I haven't seen this one, so everything here is new to me. Okay. <laughs> and you like it so far? Your fan? <laughs> <laughs> it's something else. <laughs> <laughs> so far, the sound effects are classic Ruby Spears. Oh yeah. yeah. Have a pleasant flight, Norris. Have a pleasant what? Flight? Flight. I've never forgotten that there's an article in a, a 1960s Mad Magazine that always said the villains in like James Bond movies, cartoons are always the most polite 
they're always like, so nice of you to drop in. And, and then, then the heroes are always like, you scum. You, tr-, you know, they're always the rude ones. And, and also, he, villain- just stole, he just stole a motorcycle. You know? Right, like, exactly. He's the, yeah, he's the bad guy. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry, I'm an American. I'm going to be taking some of your stuff. <laughs> Have a nice flight, Mr. Norris. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I will. <laughs> You're not going to get away that easy, pal. <laughs> you can't fly. You'll have to speak up, Norris. I'm far away and can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great pause. <laughs> oh, man. Great pause. But wait, That's... how is he falling faster than the I just have a <laughs> physics question? How is he falling faster? Well, they have a parachute, which is slowing them. And he's oh. also Chuck Norris, so he can... You know, okay. Has... But this right. is the, that's the still for the, for the episode. That's, what, that's absolutely the thumbnail. Down, Norris. That's definitely yeah. the thumbnail. <laughs> I don't believe this guy. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. What do you think? I am going somewhere. Boy. (laughs) That's how the physics works. Uh Here we go again. Running out of parachutes. Hang on. Wow, this is too much. I want to know who's working with a claw on this, and I want to know it now. Oh, even Norris's mouth was hidden behind the strap, so they didn't oh, really animate yeah. that. I wonder if there was ever a discussion like, is there any way we can just get a mask on Norris? Is there any reason <laughs> we can put a mask on Norris? Now's the time to make a cartoon about now because <laughs> everybody wears masks, so we should do the, the 2020 cartoon. Yes, the pandemic cartoon. Yeah, yeah. it'd be so easy to animate. Just had to work on get, worry about get, blinking. Get whoever's and, left of Ruby and Spears to help us out. Right, and, and uh, of course the toy tie-ins. Right. Oh, yeah. This show sells itself. Mm-hmm. By the way, there was a Chuck Norris lookalike at the D.C. Uh, the Capitol riots, uh, and Norris had to come out and say that it wasn't him there. <laughs> He's a Trump supporter. And, Is there uh, a picture but... of him somewhere? Can you Yeah, there, it there was a... The... I'll, I'll pull up a picture of it, okay. yeah. We'll do it at the break. Yeah, this is the bad guy. Where is the laser robot? I haven't. Where, where is the laser robot? <laughs> Unable to get it yet. My plans for a frontal attack on Tokyo depend on the laser robot. I'm sorry I failed you, Claw. I hate. He kind of look like Jack Rebney a little bit. I kind of think he looks like Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. Doesn't he yes. kind of look like that? Total Ming. Yeah, absolutely. That word. You know what I do to people who are sorry. Take off your glasses. But Claw, my eyes, I can't stand the light. Now. Whoa. Ah! Ah, I won't fail again. You can be sure of that. We're Super Ninja. Super Ninja? Yes, Claw. We still have an opportunity to get the laser robot. It's in transit on board the bullet train. No doubt, along with Norris. Take a drink. Norris. Take another one. Do whatever you want, but get me that laser robot. I'll force Norris to do Tanaka's work for him. I wonder if the gang is on board the train. We'll find out in a minute. They're kind of using him as a raft. Wait, what? They're just kind of using him as a raft, you know? Yeah, yeah. Two chucks right there. What's the chuck count at? What's our chuck count at, George? Uh, 23. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fuck and roll. Thought I lost you for sure this time. Don't you worry, partner. I'll be around to teach your grandchildren. There's the 
plays a You've robot. You've eaten nothing. I'm not hungry. Not hungry? You really are worried about too much. I miss that little rascal. Now don't worry, Chuck will bring him back. Hey, open up! Oh, too much! <laughs> <laughs> We took a shortcut. I, I haven't seen much Walker, Texas Ranger, but from what I have seen, it's a lot like the cartoon. You know what I mean? Just like, knock, yeah, knock, I'm it's here. It's an adventure of the week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mostly know it from the Conan uh, bits yeah. they would show. Yeah. 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 I used to watch it um, when it came on, mostly, I think, like the last few seasons. And you're right. It is kind of more or less like this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That should be your next book, Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> yeah. My appetite is coming back. Is that a uh, suggestive thing there? Was that <laughs> suggestive? Hmm. I don't know. I'm asking. Oh, wait, what's that? <laughs> you have beautiful hair, Super When somebody interrupts my lunch, you stay there. But no buts. What's that weapon? <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> Some kind of gauntlet. <laughs> it's got a dragon on the bottom. Is there a CN anywhere on there? Yeah, there is actually. I think. Yes, see, there yeah, is. On the top, in the little crest. Oh, there yeah, it I is. see it yeah. too. Yeah, see yeah. it. Yep. And I want all my weapons to have my initials on them. <laughs> and everybody else's too. <laughs> yeah. Guess who's in big trouble? I don't know, Norris. Tell me. You are. You should never have done that. Yeah. I owe you one. I want somebody to draw fake Chuck Norris Karate Commandos weapons. You know, like. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. have one by the end of the episode. Okay. okay perfect. All right. A wine chalice that says CN on it. Right. Uh, a, a, maybe a garden weasel. A, a, a candelabra that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One super ninja. The bomb is ready. My hair is caught in the wheels. Like, hey, they really take some, some like the, the physics. They don't even care about the physics. No, no. They're just like it's just he needs to go from this point to this point, and he's going there. Now, if you're a ninja, I think you're supposed to be sleek. You're supposed to be not noticed. So why have your long flowing black locks oh, outside and of your mask? And you're supposed to have a, a beautiful head of hair. That's the oh, ninja code. I, but under the mask. That's what I Beautiful thought flowing <laughs> head of hair. Okay. The ninja code. Back, you coward! Oh, it's kind of snow piercer now. Really show them. I don't know. That was too easy. But can I ask you? This is just nitpicky kind of thing. How are they? How is he being held up right here? <laughs> I don't see his hands anywhere. And then and, when the and Norris's head is the size of too much of his entire body. <laughs> oh no! I... And he's just standing there too. But then, like, look in the next scene. I don't know. They have to go down. That was too easy. Distance. They fall down. Yeah. Mr. Norris, we received a message from the claw. There's an explosive device on the train. Deliver the laser robot or the train will be destroyed. If we slow or stop the train, the device will explode automatically. We can't risk people it's getting speed. hurt. We'll have to give him what he wants for now. Call the arm. 
Army and have the helicopter pace the train. We'll the the Does it? Yep. Oh my god. Yes. Norris, take it down a notch. Who is he? Oprah? Just yeah. everything has <laughs> got his name on it. Load the robot through the baggage doors. Kabe, see how the robot is doing. Find a dandy boss. Who would live on Mount Fuji? It's the ancient home of the ninja warriors. Pepper, stay as close as you can. I hear you, Chuck. Don't try and pull anything or the bullet train will be turned into scrap metal. All I want to know from you is how to defuse that bomb. What for? Burn the chopper! Hey, boss. I get the feeling they don't want us to leave. I'm afraid the Claw has other plans for you. Lock them up! <clears throat> okay. What well, action, I'll give him that. Non-stop Non-stop. action. Yeah. yeah. Have a pleasant stay while you're still here. <laughs> Being polite again. Very, very polite. Have a pleasant stay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> what the ice mean? machine is down the hall. <laughs> and while you're still here. Do you need anything? My name's Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw the CN on his uh, belt buckle. Oh, oh yeah. Buckle. Oh, nice. Good eye. Branding. Yeah. It's all about branding. Yep. yep. Hope you like the showers. <laughs> How are we gonna get out of here? We have to get to the grating. Snake! <laughs> Look out, Chuck! Oh, action pack. And we're going into a commercial break. He's probably oh, he's gonna a die. He's probably going to die. He's definitely going to die. There's no doubt about it. No wonder the show ended. Um, So, George, you put together some commercials for us. And uh, I'm excited. I've never been more excited about one of your commercial blocks than I am about this one. Oh, well, this is, uh, let's see. I guess this was a very 80s and 90s phenomenon that is gone today. This was uh, 900 lines and before that, 976 lines. And they were for products large and small. So I believe these are ranged from in budget from greatest to least. Saturday morning cartoons will be right back. I am He-Man. Call She-Ra and me at 1-900-909-2233. We'll journey to distant worlds, explore the universe, and probably get to call Eternia, and, uh... <laughs> just, it just seems like pure evil. Doesn't it? They're just, like, pure, just, like... Targeting I'm, children. Call this phone on. number that um, we're yeah. going to charge your parents for this, and at the end, they say, you know, tell you... Well, anyway, let's... Go along the way, huh? Recorded message. Probably, Orko. There's a new adventure. Wait, wait, I want to hear what Orko had to say there. Sorry. Explore the universe. And probably battle Skeletor along the way, huh? Probably, Orko. There's a new adventure every day. We'll also tell you how to get an action figure or this colorful poster. Of- not, not like win an action figure. No. But to get an action figure. We'll tell your parents how to what stores carry our merchandise. <laughs> Tell you how to get an action figure or this colorful poster. Part of your two dollar thirty five cent two minute call will go to local science museums. Get your parents' permission. Not much of it will, but some of it will. It Barely any. <laughs> then call one nine hundred nine zero nine two two three three. I have the power to bilk you out of money. I have a boglin. <laughs> Me and my buddies want to be your friend, right, guys? Right. right. Call oh, us at one nine hundred nine zero nine five four six four and hear how we can protect you from ferocious. Are these ghoulies? They look like ghoulies. They're ghoulie wannabes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you see they actually scared that cat for that scene? <laughs> they came in little crates. Here, how we can Cardboard Protect crates. you from ferocious beasts. <laughs> and help you teach a great math test. Yeah, a new story every day. One call gets you a 3D Boglin hologram like this. Four calls get you a set of six. So get your parents' permission and call us at 1-900-909-5464. Don't get the phone! You called Bodlins yeah, yesterday. <laughs> I know, but I need to call for four days to get a set of six holograms. Get it! The Science Museum it. will never open if we don't call Bodlins. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. I danced all night at the ball and I lost one of my golden slippers. She's not she, enunciating very well she at all. Drunk? <laughs> She's drunk? She's 
drunk Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Oh, I'm so tired. I danced all night at the ball and I lost one of my golden slippers. If you dial this number, I'll tell you how I met my prince, what it's like to live in a real castle. In a castle? Even how I learned to get along with my stepsisters. There's a new Cinderella story every day just for you. There's my prince. Don't forget to call me. Two dollars for call. Cinderella Children get action. your parents' permission call before you die. <laughs> I mean, they're all that one seems awfully close to the adult nine seven six number. Yeah. Call now. In days of old, mighty tales were told of the sailing ships and the sailors bold. Call nine seven six six zero 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 for an exciting tale of a brand new hero. Call nine seven six six thousand. That's all. Get your parents' permission before you call. That's all. Two dollars per call plus possible toll. Did anybody call that one? Nobody called that one. What? I don't even know what. What are they selling us here? Just like a story of the animation of a shipwreck, yeah. (laughs) Children, ask your parents permission before calling. Hey, what you gonna do today, Marty? I'm gonna call 976-7777. They're gonna tell me a great story every day. I'm gonna ask my parents. Nick, will you call this number right now? I want I want this one to work. (laughs) Dial dial Syphil and Ollie here. I mean (laughs) If it's okay if I call 976-7777. No, me first. Me first. Two dollars per call plus possible toll. Uh, Ask your parents permission before calling. Hey, kids, guess who's back in town? Hey, kids, it's me, the Spring Bunny. I had lots of fun telling you about my Easter Spring adventures, bunny. and I've got so much more to tell you. Call me. You put this one here in here for Sally, right? This is specifically for Sally. Is that right? cornbread, or is that... That's yeah. a Mason. That's Mason. Today, and I'll tell you a fantastic springtime story. Oh, my forest friends the will be here, too. Bunny. We can't wait to share our warm with the fun and discoveries with you. There's a new story every day, so call today. Remember, get your parents' permission before you die. Or don't. It doesn't matter. Two dollars per call. I'm a bunny. I don't know. Now back to Saturday morning cartoons. Like every day, did they record a new thing? Like I don't know. You guys don't know the answer. Hey kids, I'm still a bunny. <laughs> it's day seventy-eight. Did you guys ever call one nine hundred numbers, Jason? Did you ever call one nine hundred number? At any nope, point? I never called. Nope, never no. called one of them. So I don't know how these things uh, went down. <laughs> I mean, there's no overhead for them to have this, right? I mean, they're just like, we have this 1-900 number, and we just have to have a sellable product. Like, I mean, yeah. Uh, the Boglins. yeah, well, they had to do that, yeah. But uh, they, they also, I'm guessing they just went to a recording booth and recorded, like, you know, enough for a month's worth of stories and then Probably just cycled them, them out every there should, day. There should be a documentary about 1-900 numbers, because that was, that was big. I called the 1-900 number at a friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down because I knew I was going to his house. I was like, I'm going to call it there because he, he had parents that weren't really uh, hands on. You know, they weren't usually weren't around. And um, the funnest places to hang out. Yeah, right? The best Friends houses. Those are the best. Heath's parents. house. Oh, Heath's house was so much fun. Uh, but I called the NWA. Uh, you know, the Straight Out of Compton. They had a one nine hundred number, and uh, it was <laughs> what just was their like, commercial like? Hey kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was on the inside of their album. And so I, and I called it and it was just like, hey, I'm MC Ren. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, I, these are some of my hobbies. I don't know. I don't even remember <laughs> what he said. Um, but yeah, one of her numbers. I, I called they- Dial-A-Joke once. It was, uh, I believe it was 976 Laugh. And it was a pre-recorded uh, Phyllis Diller. And she told three or four jokes. Jokes. And uh, that was About Fang it. probably. And yeah. Fantastic. Um, all right. I want to dive into Jason's book here. Uh, there's some fun facts here from his book. Um, and uh, there's one in here that I want to ask. This is going to be a trivia for uh, Nick and George. Um, which 1981 cartoon and toy line was put out by American Greeting Cards and was considered a pioneer of the Saturday morning gold rush? I'm going to say Care Bears. I'm going to say Smurfs. Okay. Wrong. Geared towards girls. You want to take another guess? You get to take another Rainbow guess. Rainbow Bright? Closer. Strawberry, strawberry Shortcake? Strawberry Shortcake. Ah. Yep. Jason, you said that Strawberry Shortcake was like the one that really got a lot of this started because they had toys and they had... Yeah. Right. That was the uh, one, the first property where it was out there in, in, in toys and you know, bed sheets and all that stuff. And they decided, okay, we can uh, promote this by getting somebody to make an animated uh, cartoon of it now they didn't do a full series but they did an animated special it was called the world of strawberry shortcake and they they got the guys that did uh, the ninja turtles cartoons uh, later on um murakami wolf swenson that was the company that did it they put together this um special and it was a big hit and that's the one that kind of kicked off everything else like the care bears and rainbow bright and uh, all the uh the cutesy girl stuff and really now, like all the stuff with like 
toy lines attached mm -hmm. to it. And you, you mentioned right. one thing in here that I had no idea about Hot Wheels in 1969. They had the toys first and they're like, let's make this, this cartoon Hot Wheels. Uh, and then the FCC saw it and they're like, FCC was like, no, this is, this is a commercial. This isn't a cartoon for kids. So they shut it down. But 1980s, that was a different story. Right. That was a different story. Uh, part of it was um, when President Reagan got uh, elected to office, they were a lot more hands off when it came to uh, television and things like that. So the FCC began to pull back. And another um, and something else was that the um, Strawberry Shortcake special uh, aired on syndicated television. In other words, it was like mm -hmm. on one of those channel 37 or 47. Or, it wasn't on network Saturday morning. So if you win the syndication, then the uh, requirements were much smaller. Yeah, it's interesting because you always assume that the toy based cartoons were more of the boy stuff like, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, traditionally, like how they're marketed towards one or the yeah, other. Yeah, Joe, Transformers. Like the yeah, but it's like interesting that. that it actually started with the American Greetings, like with uh, Strawberry yeah. Shortcake. And also yeah. American Greetings, you, you say in the book, like Hallmark was up here. American Greetings, like they weren't even like the top greeting right. card business. They were just like, let's try this out. Yeah, if you got your uh, greeting card, you got it from Hallmark. American Greetings was further down. And then once they uh, did uh, hit jackpot with Strawberry Shortcake, Hallmark decided, okay, we got to you know, get our own property in the field or we're going to get left behind. And that's how they uh, came up with Rainbow Bright. Oh, that was then, Hallmark's. Right. Hallmark what? was Rainbow Bright. American oh. Greetings was Strawberry Shortcake and Care Bears. What about the Shirt Tails and the Get Along Gang? Because those are greeting card properties too. yeah i think those were american greetings um yeah. i'd have to double check but okay. i get the feeling that they were all right interesting but it's funny yep. that they're all like greeting card companies they're not like toy i guess hot wheels was a toy company first but all these are like greeting card companies and i think mm -hmm. it, maybe this is just uh just from what i've read in your book that may they, they knew the the data on it they knew that strawberry cards cards that had strawberries on it sold mm -hmm. So they're like, well, let's make a strawberry character. And I think they had a strawberry character in one of the cards that sold well. So they're like, mm -hmm. you know, let's just make a cartoon out of it. Yeah. And these Amer and these uh, card companies, what, what do they do? They present these cute, cuddly characters that um, you can put on a birthday card, you know, because where, where does a lot of this stuff get sold? You get sold to kids. They get, you know, your third, you know, if you're three years old, four years old, five years old, they pick up the card. Oh, they love it. And this and that. And they figured, hey, if they love the character on the card, maybe they'll buy a bed sheet. Maybe they'll buy a doll. And so totally. forth. <laughs> yes. Oh, so this is all like a direct, like, this is like capitalism. Saturday morning cartoons mm -hmm. is like pure capitalism, right? I mean, like, because <laughs> like, yeah, it didn't fly in the 60s. But like once Ronald Reagan came in, it was just like, yeah. Yeah. Uh... The Reagan years were like Heath's parents, just laissez faire, <laughs> hands <laughs> off, do whatever uh, the hell you want to. Jason, there's one, I don't mean to criticize the book, but there's one glaring oversight in the book. And that's the lack. You don't even dedicate a chapter of the book to cartoon mustaches. There's no information <laughs> about cartoon mustaches at all. I call them Saturday. Second edition, maybe with a. Well, that's something in second edition. Maybe you can include Saturday morning mustaches. So I decided. <laughs> I decided to take a deep dive into cartoon mustaches because this particular show has two mustached cartoon characters in this, and um, I'm going to just do a little slideshow here. But I didn't include like Family Guy characters or like Ned Flanders or any of the you know more adult recent cartoons i stuck with the golden age of mustache characters so um all right here take a look this is um first one this is uh chuck norris like look at that mustache that is nick that's like the color of your mustache too isn't it yep exactly it's bright red like an orange <laughs> exactly so that's uh chuck norris there's your first mustache this is another mustache we saw claw claw he had a mustache too jack rubney more of a um, zero mustel kind of a yeah Okay. Then you got uh, Yosemite Sam, which his face is like 95% mustache. He's he's like one of the biggest mustache men of all yeah. of them. I never realized you can only see his ears and nose. Like his, his eyebrows his are. Yeah. I didn't realize those were his eyebrows. He's just all hair. Yeah. Yeah. His mouth is a mustache too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Boris from uh, Bullwinkle, mustached. Barely, barely mustache, but he's still technically mustache. That's a fun one. What's this guy's name? Snidely, Snidely Whiplash. Whiplash. Yes, from Dudley Do Right. Um, he had like the more evil mustache, and he used that as kind of like a, an accessory. Um, this, I, this is my favorite. This is the first one I thought of when I when I was <laughs> do I was going to do mustache cartoon characters. Mister Spacely from the Jetsons, like such a boss. I want to have a boss yeah. like this someday. It's kind of a. Uh... <laughs> 
2010s Michael Jordan mustache there too. It's, it's kind of got that <laughs> a little Hitlery. Yeah, a little. Just yeah. a little bit. It's bordering on Hitlery. Then mm-hmm. of course you got the uh, Mario and Luigi, the cartoons, uh, mm-hmm. they had mustaches. Uh, the Rescue Rangers, he had uh, Monty. Monterey. Yeah, yeah. He had a mustache. That's a good. That's that's a, that's a good mustache too. Most of these are reddish mustaches. Interestingly. Yeah, I wonder what the reason is for that. You'd think they'd be like brownish mustaches. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Maybe they do that to contrast with, uh, say, their hair color. If it's darker color, then maybe they just kind of make the mustache brighter. Yeah, and I, th- I feel like seeing like red is more interesting than seeing like a dull brown or something. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, do you remember that one? There's like one week of Smurfs where Papa Smurf shaved off his beard and just left his mustache. Do you remember that? There's I, I pulled no. a screen grab. Yeah, this is like huh. an actual like <laughs> film still from it. Yeah, yeah. And, but then he he grew it back because uh, everyone told him that he looked too smurfy. So, oh really? Yeah, yeah he's he self conscious. Accurate. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And just to close out the slideshow, while I was googling pictures of uh, Papa Smurf, I found this one on the internet of um, Papa Smurf smoking a spliff and holding an assault rifle. So <laughs> I just thought I'd he was up. at the insurrection, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Chuck Norris was not. I will show you though. I knew there was like I, there was rumor that he was at the uh, Capitol insurrection, but it turns out he had to go on record and say it, it wasn't. But Norris has been an adamant Trump supporter for uh, you know for four years. But uh, it was a lookalike, but even dresses a little bit like Chuck Norris. That and I think they that's had not to, Chuck Norris that's on not the left. Chuck Norris. He had to go. He had to deny it. And and what they proved is that Chuck Norris has blue eyes, and this guy has brown eyes. Well, but uh, it, I think it's, it's mostly the like. I think it's the bolo tie that's really yeah. that really sells to this Norris. But on the right is Super Ninja, by the way. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. him. Yeah, unmasked. Shaved, shaved his hair, I guess, yeah. or went balding. I do um, have right. um I do have a few weapons. Um, oh yeah, Norris weapons. Yeah, let's, let's take uh, a look. Oh, um, this is a an, an <laughs> axe that was also a desk lamp. Um, cool. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Uh, oh, this is name CM. Right. This is a colander that also has spikes <laughs> on it, and this is a, a Toyota Prius on a stick. <laughs> so. George, oh, yeah, that could do some damage. Yeah, yeah you're you're too much. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Uh, all right. Let's uh, the thrilling conclusion of Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos. Uh, here's where he'll die, and then the credits will roll. In Terror Train. <laughs> You got the snake! Too much! Yeah, now what does he do with it? So what's too much is catch I haven't I haven't picked up on it yet. I can't remember. Chuck Norris. <laughs> Gonna use it to get out of here. Copy the grading. You got it, boss. All right, too much. Here's where you earn your pay. You're getting us out of here. <laughs> Tommy, hold on to the sea serpent while too much uses it for a step ladder. Hold on to the gotcha, sea serpent. Boss. <laughs> Some of the lines are so great. <laughs> oh, this episode's way better. Just the like, oh, it'd be funny to have Chuck Norris say this. What's yeah, up? all right. Earn your pay. You're getting us out of here. Tommy, hold on to the sea serpent while too much uses it for a step ladder. Gotcha, boss. Keep going, too much. Climb up this living animal. <laughs> Alive. Way to go! Everybody out. Chemo, you first. Good news. I have the laser robot, and Norris is out of the way. Wonderful. Got a real I'm Edgar glad you complexion. Live to see your next birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have anything clever to say, like knock knock or anything like that? Yeah. Came in and like. <laughs> Sorry to bust in. <laughs> hey, that could be a potential Norris weapon. No, no. Oh, oh, yeah. Some unidentified. <laughs> that is a weapon. That is a Norris. It's a rowing machine. That's uh, uh, yeah. He's gonna sell it with Christy Brinkley. Norris. Perhaps I spoke too soon, Tanaka. <laughs> No. Those are prescription. Ah! 
Turn up as the albino. Let's go. Ah. How do I defuse that bomb? Forget it, Norris. There's no way. It'll explode no matter what you do. Don't shoot, you fools. You might hit me. Wise decision, Tanaka. We're leaving. Right, Tanaka? You tell him, Chuck. Bad guys always use the word fools, too. They always refer to them as fools. It's always <laughs> fools. That's how you know you're the bad guy in our show. Because you're <laughs> Nick and I. Fools. <laughs> right. You fools. Yes. Put your guns down. Tabe, clear a path. Move it. Move. It's the robot. Everybody inside. The force still wins, Norris. That train is doomed. I'll just have to see about that. <laughs> we have to get back to the train. Not escape! Reed, slow those guys down. No sweat. I mean, the laser did all the work on that, right? <laughs> yeah. Reed had very little to do. Fire! It. <laughs> They're immediately up to their necks in the snow. <laughs> Even the robot. Uh, I want some yeah. of these animation cells. Yeah, they're so good. Got it. They're getting closer. Tabe, give me a hand. Kimo, Reed, get the laser robot. There. Get the laser robot. Just the, just every <laughs> the laser robot. Just every time gets me. Sled and skis. Just call it robot at this point. Yeah. Get the laser robot on it. Too much. Fantastic. <laughs> My is getting old too much. <laughs> you could say it's getting a little too much. <laughs> Trouble. Zero effect. That's zero effect on him. Like, on look snow. at the I mean, just missed him. Okay. <laughs> Isn't he cold? I mean, oh, I, I know exactly. he's got a lot of blubber, but yeah. still. They're in trouble. Where is she even driving from? Where's that? Oh, there must be a and, road right there. Yeah, but like, you're going to need chains on your tires and you're driving a Corvette. That's rear wheel Convertible. Drive. She's driving a convertible right now. Yeah, you're going to be spinning everywhere. I'm starting, I'm starting to think there might be some flaws in this episode. Hmm. You're in trouble. Wheels, don't fail me now. Hold on, guys. Help's coming. No! What? You guys glasses back? <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, I noticed that on the car it has CN, but from if you just look at the bottom of the of the door, it looks like TV. Oh, that's total does. TV. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or it could be CTV, Chuck Norris television. Yeah. Yeah. They're catching a ride on a cor convertible Corvette. <laughs> Going down. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like, fuck it, let's just do it. Let's All do right. it, guys. Let's do it. Why don't like, I even know? The Furious movies have better logic with their, their oh, yeah. stunts than this does. Um, but what did Norris say there? Sorry. Why don't I even odd some? I'll put on Magic 98, soft hits of today. <laughs> and also, this device is very specific to very specific situations, isn't it? Yeah. What, what possible, like, how could this... I don't know what this would do. It keeps standard with the Corvette. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, no! They're like, we want to install this in case you ever go by trees that you need to chop <laughs> down that will make them fall behind you. <gasps> nice shot! Too much. Her, I mean, nice her, shot. Her, her, na her name is Nice Shot. <laughs> <laughs> we got more trouble! Is everybody all right? 
Never felt better. Pepper, you think you can get this thing going? More We've than is necessary. Catch. Boss, you think that thing will run? Give me about two minutes. All it needs is a woman's touch. Oh, they're gonna steal an airplane. Hold it steady. This is the fun speed, exactly. This is before speed, though. Speed copy. Yeah, I know. That's, a, yeah. yeah, that's what I think. Chuck, watch out! I'll have Good my effort. revenge now. We'll see. <laughs> you have been a thorn in my side long enough. I'm not wild about you either. That's slow motion, that one. <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of doing a... <laughs> What's happening to him? Looks like he's falling into another dimension. Yeah, that's what yeah, it is. There's he... a portal. There's a portal down there. That's what it that's... is. That's... I trigger the detonator. Where's Pepper? <laughs> the laser to exactly take <laughs> off the detonator <laughs> and now they're flying the plane low enough that norris from under the train can hop on the wing i mean i don't know if we've ever watched a cartoon that takes as many leaps as this like no. like physics leaps as this and i tip my hat to him i tip my hat oh. hanging out on airplane wings like he's yeah, he could be inside in this episode there's like two airplane wings that he hangs out on well we finally got the robot to its destination but more importantly <laughs> every <laughs> I, you know what i haven't watched all these wraparounds by but there's some great lines i might have to cut yeah. together a montage of all these yeah. well we finally got the robot to its destination <laughs> Well, we finally like got the rope up to its destination. But more importantly, every what's that red thing behind him? Treadmill. Yeah. Or uh, not a treadmill, uh, an exercise uh, bike, right? Exercise bike. I yeah. think it might be a laser robot, guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, where the destination was. They got it. To. <laughs> but more importantly, everybody on the train was saved. It was a tough job, and Claw was at his worst. I don't like having to resort to violence. It's always my last option. No, it's not. I'd rather walk away from the Except fight. The it's my I can't. See you next time. Ruby Spears, you've done it again. Yes. Ooh. There's that logo. If I ever take it's a good. karate class, I'm going to get a gi and then ask if I can actually put a CN symbol on it. And they'll say absolutely, yeah. or or, or <laughs> they'll say or or they'll say it comes standard with all karate geese. <laughs> I want to finish listening to this song because it's it's a great tune. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. There we go. Wow, karate karate commandos. commandos. Yes. Um, I like that episode way more than the one that I watched the other day. Um, that was fantastic. The Killer Dolphin episode. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, Jason, so many rich nug nuggets in your book, Rise and Fall of the 80s Toon Empire. Um, I get another trivia question based on something I read in here. Um, George and Nick, 
Filmation in the later 80s, they pitched a show to Mattel, which, by the way, I love that they pitch shows to toy companies, not to networks. They pitch it to Mattel. They called it Hero, like He-Man, he hyphen Ro, son of He-Man, Hero, son of He-Man. Mattel passed on it. But in the pitch, what were they going to call Skeletor's son? (laughs) <laughs> they had a name for Skeletor's son. What do you think Skeletor's son's name was? Uh, this is real, too. Boner. <laughs> no. No. Skelly. Skelly. It, it's so good. They should have just, they should have greenlit this just for this name alone. Skeleton. Oh. <laughs> He's the Skeleton. And that's a better show name than Hero by a long shot yes yes mm-hmm. jason my favorite chapter in the book has been the one of the last chapters where it's uh deke versus filmation and you titled you, the title of the chapter is two came in one came out and just seeing like filmation up against deke which deke was like this powerhouse back then right mm-hmm. i mean like they were they called it deke yeah. university Right. Well, um, Filmation started off as the veteran. Those were the guys that were at some point in, during the Saturday morning, um, you know, cartoons. They were almost like one half of the uh, of the production. You have film, uh, Hanna Barbera on one end, and then you have Filmation the other. So when they kicked off the uh, the syndicated um, cartoon boom, uh, they were the veterans. They were the people that had decades worth of experience. Now Deke, that was a different story. Those were the newcomers. Um, Deke uh, started off as a uh, as an American. Um, kind of a sub, a spinoff of a French animated company. So Deke, everything, they were just new. They had to hire new people. They, um, they, had a, they didn't have a library. Like Inspector Gadget was their very first uh, show, along with, well, The Littles, that was on Saturday morning, but on syndicated television, it was Inspector Gadget. So in 1983, uh, Filmation and Deke literally were the first ones on the field. They had um, Filmation at He-Man, Deke had Inspector Gadget, and by the late 80s when a lot of these cartoons just kind of fell by the wayside deke was still left standing but filmation uh they ended up getting uh sold to a um this uh french company and then that was the end for them yeah and you said in there like deke they call it deke university right because, uh, chuck lorry started there mm-hmm. like chuck lorry yeah. got to start at deke in the late 80s richard rainus from the simpsons he was mm-hmm. there like he was a longtime simpsons writer yeah, the Chuck Lorre story uh, is one of my favorites because uh, we all know him as the guy that made um, all these uh, all these po- uh, popular sitcoms. But uh, when he started out, he was just a, a salesman. He walked up to uh, you know, Deke's door and he was like selling stuff. And they said, uh, "Can you uh, can you do funny jokes?" And they offered him a job writing uh, episodes of the Heathcliff cartoon. So, just one big general question: What happened to Saturday morning cartoons? Why did they? Why mm-hmm. did? Why do they no longer exist? Like, what was? Well, Saturday, if we're talking about uh, Saturday morning cartoons, what happened, you could probably sum it up as cable television uh, swept in and took the entire, um, it took the entire field because you see, the thing is, uh, as Nickelodeon became more popular, they were sucking up advertising dollars. Now, if you're working for CBS or NBC or ABC, you can't, you're not going to approve a cartoon show if you know you're not going to get a lot of advertising dollars for it. And that's part of the reason why it just kind of went downhill. Because uh, like Nickelodeon was one-stop shopping. Everybody right. just went to, like, kids just went there and their programming was actually pretty good. Their writers were good. They didn't just rely on fads. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it makes sense that, yeah, it mm-hmm. dried up. Mm-hmm. But where do people go to find uh, cartoons with magical Rubik's Cubes now? I mean, they're they're (laughs) Saturday morning cartoons. That's That's where they go. Only here. On our show, YouTube, 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, Hey, uh, George, you did did an investigation recently, right? This is the first in a series of investigations. A deep dive and investigation. Investigation. Nineteen eighty six saw the debut of the Chuck Norris Karate Commandos Empire, which included a cartoon, action figures, comic books, and a white messiah complex. But what do we know about the character of Too Much? In design and execution, this sidekick is clearly inspired by Short Round from 1984's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. But what of his bizarre name and catchphrase? Let's invest Toongate. 
Karate Commandos was executive produced by Ken Ruby and Jack Spears. Before starting Ruby Spears Studios in 1977, these two worked at Hanna-Barbera, where in 1969 they were tasked with cloning the successful cartoon, The Archie Show. But the series we know as Scooby-Doo was originally about a teenage rock band and their dog called The Mysteries Five, who investigated ghosts when not on stage. The character designs were nearly complete in this early concept art, though Velma lacks glasses and Fred has red hair. The characters we know as Fred, Velma, Daphne, and Shaggy were originally named Jeff, Linda, Kelly, and WW, and relevant to our mystery. At this preliminary stage, the dog that became Scooby-Doo was in fact named Too Much. It would take Whoa. nearly two decades for Ken Ruby and Jack Spears to finally have a character named Too Much. But just as they constantly reused animation backgrounds, Ruby Spears made sure to recycle every one of their ideas. Oh, jinkies. Nailed it, George. Wow, what a segment. <laughs> Too much. Oh, Too boy, much. that was beautiful, precious. That may be wow. one of, part one of one. Well, for your next one, can you do something on why his name was W.W.? What? Uh, yes. That does not roll off the tongue at all. And and he was apparently Daphne, or the character who became Daphne's brother. Hmm. Can you also find out if the character of chemo in Karate Commandos was short for chemotherapy? Uh, just, uh, that's just a hunch I have, but look into it. Yeah. I, I will. Yep. And best to engage that. <laughs> I shall. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, pick up uh, Jason's book. It's a uh, rise and fall of the '80s Toon Empire. I feel like there's like a movie in here or something, Jason. It looks like the the Deke versus Filmation. I feel like there's like a movie. The Ghostbusters feud alone, you know. Yes. The real Ghostbusters and Filmation. What's, I feel like Filmation is kind of like the Gil from The Simpsons, just like, all right, we're gonna give it a shot. It's gonna be <laughs> He Man's son, and we're gonna. This is a good one. It's Skeletine. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I also love Filmation's uh, their moxie at uh, trying to elbow wait elbow their way into the Ghostbusters craze when they put their own uh, Ghostbusters cartoon up when at the same time they were trying to do the other Ghostbusters based on the movies. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Lou Scheimer has there's this quote from Lou Scheimer that I love. He says, you know, uh, I don't uh, I don't think there's going to be enough room for them now that we're here. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, wow. I tell you what, Jason, you got to do like a podcast or something like you. You just have this wealth of information about this whole world and you just got to the world needs to hear it. Uh, Well, we'll say I am working on a uh, quote sequel to this book. Uh, Currently, uh, 80s Toon Empire, it only goes up to about maybe 87 or 88. But uh, there is more to there's more story to tell. I want to go into like the Disney era. That's when he had DuckTales and then Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, the Disney afternoon, all that stuff. So um We'll see, yeah, I'll see how it goes. But school it... cartoons would be great. I mean, I was mm-hmm. raised on those. And as uh, as two people who have, have spent most of our careers organizing videotapes and putting them away and sorting boxes, I wish you luck with whatever's behind you, Jason. I think uh, <laughs> you got your work cut out for you. Some might say it's too much stuff back there. But, <laughs> um... Too much. Too much.